Hey guys, welcome to my first book review for 2020. And this one is all about the checklist book by one of my favorite bloggers, Alexandra Franzen. Now, I was really excited when I saw that she had written yet another book. And I have to admit that this book is kind of what made me tweak my resolution in 2020 to go through a no buy year. I kind of had these rules where I was planning to not buy any new books. Books. And then when I got Alexandra's newsletter and I saw that she had a book coming out in January, I was like, oh my God, I cannot not buy this book. And so I've actually had to tweak my no buyer to a low buyer and allow myself to purchase one book every single month. And in January, this was the book that I chose just so that I could get my hands on this book and so I could read it. So I was really excited to go through this book. And once I'd read it, I decided that I had to do a book review and share it with you guys just so that you could get your hands on this book too. If this book re review resonated with you and if you thought there was something in this book that you could use in your life and in your business. So without much further ado, let's kind of jump in. And before that, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Seema Barwani. I'm the founder of contentbyseema.com. We help people monetize their passion into online courses. But one of the things that I'm especially passionate about is learning and reading. And I really feel that as an entrepreneur, in fact, as an employee, and then as an entrepreneur, probably the secret to my success has been that willingness to pick up a book and read it and then use that big idea from the book and apply it in my life and my business. So I'm really passionate to get more entrepreneurs to read and to actually take that knowledge and apply it into their lives and their business, which is why I am committed to publishing at least 52 book reviews this year. And so this one is woohoo, my first one. So I'm really excited. So let's jump in and let's talk about Alex's new book. And so I think that you would absolutely love this book if you are a checklist fan. So if you're someone like me and you love checklists, you love systems, you love productivity, this is going to be a really easy, quick, fun read for you. And I'm pretty sure you're going to get some great stuff out of it. If you love Alexandra, if you've heard of her before, if you've read her blog or her newsletter or picked up any of her books, then you are going to find this book is something that you're going to enjoy as well, just because it's very much her, her loving um, gentle style, and it's still got a lot of value packed, even though it's a tiny book with a lot of great information inside of it. If you're in someone who enjoys systems and productivity, but you're not looking for something super complicated and you just want something simple that kind of helps you um, deal with all of that chaos in your head and you're feeling overwhelmed and overstimulated, then this is probably going to be a book that you're going to really enjoy, especially in January as we're kind of setting up for the year and we're getting motivated and we're getting that momentum to go into 2020. I think this is such a great book for anyone who's kind of gone through December and maybe the last quarter of 2019 feeling like they've had so much to do, not enough time to do it all. They're kind of feeling overwhelmed with their lives and they're just looking for something to help them feel more calm, more focused and more organized every single day. But they don't want something that's overly complicated that involves, you know, multiple checkpoints or multiple processes and has like its own app or any of that stuff. And so what I really like about Alexandra's philosophy is that it's just really simple. And once you read the book, you're never going to be able to unforget it. Or, or rather, you're never going to be able to forget it. You're never going to be able to unsee it is what I wanted to say. But you're never going to be able to see the unsee the simplicity and the beauty of using a checklist to really manage any aspect of your life. So um, I did want to take a minute to kind of call out and let you know a little bit about the author. If you're not familiar with her, um, she can be found at her website, which is Alexandra franzen.com. And she is probably one of the first websites that I stum stumbled upon when I started my business online. And I kind of have always come back to it. It's one of those places that I just go to when I'm kind of in a slump and I feel unmotivated and I just want this kind of kind, gentle, yet loving way of getting back on track. And I just want to feel like it's okay to be authentic. It's okay to kind of do business in your own way. And I just feel that that's what her website really stands for is that ability to kind of come at your customers with love and to really do your business in a way that seems easy and is in flow with who you are and what you want to create in this world. So 
Be sure to check out her website. Um, once I went through this book, I also realized that she is the founder of tinypress.com and I absolutely love their message. It's kind of tiny books, um, tiny ideas in small packages. And so it's really, or rather big ideas in small packages. So they're all about publishing books that are a hundred pages or less, but that kind of potentially have the, 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 um, an idea that could change the world. It's almost like a little book, uh, a TED talk version of a little book. So big ideas that can change the world, but then they, they don't take a lot of time to read. They don't take a lot of energy to understand, but you can quickly go out and apply them into your life. So if you are someone which, who has a tiny book that you want to get out into the world, then Alex's company might actually be a perfect partner for you. I know that I might actually want to reach out to her and talk to her about some projects going forward once I actually wrap my head around a checklist and getting my book done. Um, as far as books goes, this is not her first rodeo. She has actually written six books. And I have to say that out of all of these, I love the checklist book. It's a very practical book, but the one that is really my favorite is so this is the end a love story it's about this woman who has only 24 hours left to live and her story about finding love and then just going through that whole process i have to admit that i kind of stayed up the entire night when it came out i read it in one sitting i cried it touched my heart and so i really appreciate the fact that she has this ability to write from different perspectives and write about different things and so i think that's one one of the reasons that she is one of my favorite authors and she's just someone that I was so passionate about sharing her message out into the world just because I felt that she just had something really worthwhile to say. And there's so many people that really need to listen to that as well. So jumping in a to why I read this book. So I had the fortune of reading a book on checklists. It was called The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande in the last half of 2019, and it totally blew me away. And so one of the reasons that I was curious about this book and I really wanted to pick it up was because that book had already started the conversation about checklists and their value in my mind. And I kind of wanted to continue that conversation. But whereas The Checklist Manifesto comes more from an academic standpoint. The author is a surgeon and he's just got an incredible amount of knowledge and there's just so much juicy information in there from the standpoint of how checklists can really benefit different businesses. Um, and it's all about how to kind of use a checklist in that a very dynamic scenario with a lot of people. Alex's book kind of comes at it from another direction, which is almost like somebody sitting with you next to you on a couch and then just telling you how you can use a checklist to straighten and calm and organize your life. And so I really, because of the fact that I resonate with her as a writer, I just really wanted to understand what her process would be because I felt like I got the, you know, the, the more academic, the more um, strategic, the more kind of technical way of creating a checklist. I got the process, but I really wanted to understand the heart behind creating a checklist and then the emotions behind that. And that was sort of my reason for picking this up. And then of course, I am a huge systems and productivity nerd, and I've always resonated with checklists. When Alex kind of talked about her first memory of creating a checklist when she was a child, I kind of sat down and thought about what was my first memory of creating checklists. And I remember sitting in college, especially in classes that I hated. I just remember writing lists over and over again, just so many different kinds of lists. I have no idea what those lists are about anymore, but I do remember all my friends used to make fun of me about that. And I kind of has, have always resonated with this therapeutic power of making a list and just getting things out of your mind and onto paper. And so I just kind of intuitively felt this was a great fit for me to read. And so if you're someone that feels that way, I think you're really going to enjoy this book. And I do encourage you to kind of click over to the link in the description below and purchase your copy of it. Because it, like I said, it's a quick read. It's an easy read, but it definitely has some ideas that will resonate with you and that will change your life. So one of the things that I like to do when I do book review is to kind of give a background 
of the book and also why the book really works and in terms of the theory of the book. But then I also like to share my perspective and my lessons. And so a few reasons that checklists work is because they help us become more productive and goal oriented. There's just something about checking that check mark or checking that box off and just want that makes us want to kind of go through that list and get those all done. So I have seen that it's definitely something that works. If you have little kids and you give them a checklist, they are 100% sure that they're going to run around trying to get that done. So it shows that we as human beings are wired to kind of complete stuff like this. So we do um, love checklists and we are wired to kind of become more productive and goal oriented just as a result of that. Um, our brains scientifically love checklists. There's this little burst of dopamine that gets released whenever we check, check a box. And dopamine is kind of like that drug that gives us this hit that says, oh my God, we get we did such a good job. We want another hit of it. It really is that drug that um, kind of gets released also when you're on Facebook and Instagram. And that's why these platforms are so addictive because every time you kind of like something or you see something that you like or someone likes a post um, that you've posted, it gives you this little burst of dopamine. And so you keep coming back. So it's really a great way to form a habit. And so one of the benefits of checklists is that they increase those surges of dopamine in your brain and they also reduce cortisol, which is the stress and anxiety producing hormone in your body. And so having that ability to kind of calm yourself down with a checklist instead of an antidepressant or um, a, any kind of calming medicine, I think is amazing. And not that I'm knocking medicine. I know a lot of us need this. And so that's not my intention from saying that, but I'm just saying that if you are someone who's prone to anxiety, if you're prone to stress, then one of the things you might actually benefit from in addition to getting professional help is experimenting with things like making a checklist and just having those tools that help you calm down and help you kind of calm your brain down and and give yourself that space to be less anxious and be less stressed. So um, they're scientifically proven to help our brain adopt better habits and they can also help us survive a tough situation or a challenge. And Alex was really vulnerable sharing her breakup story and how a checklist really helped her to navigate that and to get her back up on her feet and just help her move continents or not continents, but actually move um, moves across the country and to start up in a new Hawaii. If you guys didn't know, she lives in Hawaii, which is, I think is amazing and really jealous that she does that. Anyway, I love this quote by Alexandra, which is a checklist is like a form of mental medicine, the prescription for a wary overstuffed mind. And I have to say, I finished this book three days ago and I've kind of been on a checklist binge ever since. And I definitely have to say that I have thoroughly enjoyed making checklists and I've just found myself feeling calmer and happier and just more excited about what the rest of 2020 has to offer. So I definitely agree with this particular quote that it is definitely, if you are someone who suffers from having too many tabs open in your brain, then the checklist is like that one tab function on Chrome, which kind of lets you minimize all the tabs in one place. A checklist is kind of like a one tab for your brain. So I absolutely love that. Um, so in terms of what I took away from the book, as I have mentioned a couple of times, I am not a fan of book summary sites. I don't love those sites which kind of summarize a book for you and they tell you that that's it. There's nothing more in a book. All you need to read is our summary and that's it. You don't have to actually do the work and, and get that book and go through that information. I actually think that's wrong. And so one of the reasons that I like to share the things that kind of crop up to me in a book and not necessarily the biggest ideas in a book, but the things that actually resonated with me is because I want to share with you the value of a book and I want to tell you why I loved it and why I thought it was useful so that then you can make the decision whether this book is something that is worth the investment of your time and your money and your energy to actually read. And if there might be something in this book that you can find to apply in your life and business, because I think authors put in so much love and time and energy and putting these books together. And there are, there's definitely gold between these pages and you cannot have somebody else read this gold for you and give you a summary and tell you that's it. That's all that there was there in the book. You don't have to read it anymore. I instead think a book summary like this one or a book review like this one is is probably a better way to go about it because it lets you make an informed decision as to whether this is something you want to spend your time and energy on. And then if it is, then you can go through the book and find those nuggets of gold for yourself. So 
When I went through the checklist book, I found seven big nuggets of books for me. And so uh, seven big nuggets of gold for me. And so I really want to share that with you guys and tell you what I think about the book and how I plan to use this in my business and then also my life. So the first thing that Alex talked about that really resonated with me was about choosing your own personal approach to life. And I'd never really thought about choosing kind of my own compass or my own direction for life. I always knew kind of these theories, but I never really sat down and thought about the fact that the average human life is 71.5 years. I don't have that much time left. I mean, I'm pretty much halfway over that average human lifespan, which means it's time to get serious about what mark you want to leave in the world and how you, and being intentional about what you want to do with your one wild and precious life. And instead of kind of leaving you to yourself, what I really like is she kind of suggests these different ways that you can approach life. And so some of these I'd heard of, some of these are ones that I've already resonated with. And some of these really made me go, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to explore this approach. So there is, of course, living your life in accordance with your values. So identifying what are your top values and then living your life in accordance with that. There is desire mapping from Daniel Laporte, who's someone I also absolutely adore. And I really love this book. So really thinking about how do you want to feel and then creating your day based on that. There is the principle of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement, which is something I have come across in corporate life. And I also resonate with that, but I've never Never really thought about it from that personal approach side. I've always thought about it more as a quality tool. So that was interesting to me to think about it as a way to really think about your day and to structure your day. There was this approach of So Wa Kang. Um, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but it's this Korean idea of filling your day with beautiful moments. And it really got me thinking about if you could fill a 24 hour period with just small but beautiful moments, what would that day really look like? And so it's not necessarily going to be an approach that I can implement every single day, but it definitely made me go, hmm, why not experiment and try this at least one of the days in 2020? And the same thing with this idea of living from that um, place of sexual energy and thinking about sex is your number one priority of your day. That is something I'm Indian. It's culturally not a thing to talk about this stuff. And it's definitely not something that I thought about. But then when I was going through the book and I was like, wow, what would it feel like? Or what would it be like to actually make that my number one priority, making that time with my husband, my number one priority in my day? What would a day really look like? And how would you approach your day if that was your number one priority. So I thought it was just interesting to kind of put yourself in these in this place, in these shoes, and then think about how would my day look differently from each of these approaches? It was almost like trying on different glasses and just thinking about how different a day could go. The same 24 hours could go depending on the way that you were looking at it and the, and the priorities that you were kind of setting for yourself. Dying empty is definitely something I've always resonated with. It's kind of almost my battle cry. It is a book by Todd Henry. It's about, it's about living and creating your best work and not dying with your best work inside of you. It's something I definitely feel passionate about. I will do book review in this book as well. And so Dying MT was an approach that I had definitely adapted and was, it was totally up my wheelhouse. And the rest of them was just very interesting for me to explore and to think about. Um, what would Jesus do or what would Allah do or whoever, whichever faith you have is all about kind of living your life in accordance with your faith and thinking about the person that you follow and how they would do your mentor, your teacher, um, God and thinking about what they would do. And so I thought that was interesting too. It's not really something that I resonated with, but I know a lot of people would resonate with this way of approaching a day. Necessity is something that I think we all at some point are probably going to have to look at our days and plan our days around. Necessity is about anything that's urgent, important and just needs your full focus. It could be um, a death, an illness, a, a baby. It could be a great a career transition, a role transition. I just got married in December. Um, the necessity of the day for me from December to January was kind of getting used to the idea of being a wife, being a daughter-in-law, being a sister-in-law. And so it was really interesting for me to kind of craft my days to reflect that role versus my role as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. And so necessity is something that I think we all go through. So understanding that we have these seasons of life and that you can change your personal approach as 
life changes as well was really valuable to me as I was reading this book. Um, my final 24 is her hashtag from the book that I loved, which is uh, the book about having those last 24 hours on earth. But I think this is a question we should all ask ourselves at least once a year, which is that if I had only 24 hours left on earth, how would I spend them? And I think making a checklist to reflect what you would do with your last 24 hours is such a great annual exercise. It's something that I am definitely committed to doing this weekend. And that is just writing down what would I do with my last 24 hours on earth. And I'd love to repeat this exercise every single year because I think it would be so useful to kind of look at this final 24 hour list and just see how your priorities change and how the people that you want to spend your time with change and just all the things that you that make you evolve as a human being would just be captured in this checklist. So I think this is such a great approach to life. Um, and the last one, which I guess she didn't kind of talk about as a personal approach, but I kind of feel is her personal approach, which is coming alive from your hut, which is for Alexander, it means a combination of your heart and your gut and really listening to the both of them to find what's in alignment for you. So the best part about these approaches is you can use one, you can use all, you can combine them, or you can just create your own one. So I really love that she kind of gave you this buffet to choose from. And she just didn't say, this is the only way, which is what a lot of authors and a lot of books do. And she kind of introduced these different ideas. And I love that she made me think. And I love that she gave me something to experiment with because at the end of the day, life is an experiment. And so this would just be such a great way to kind of say, look, there are 10 ways. Why not go and experiment with 10 days and just live life, create a checklist, with 10 of these ways as a personal approach and then just see which one resonates with me the most. And so I think it's such a great and fun experiment to do in 2020. So thanks, Alexandra. This was the biggest takeaway for me for from the book by far. The second thing that Alex shares, which is her friends and checklist method. And this is something that I will have to say, I love that. She teaches this in her checklist class as well. And so you can find also the downloads for this on her website. But out of all of this, I won't give it to, I won't give it away, but I will say that what I loved the most about this method is the fact that she encourages you to be intentional about your first and your last moment in the day. And even though I'm used to creating a traditional checklist, which is just writing down what you need to do, even in the order of importance, one of the things that I've never really thought about is how do I want to start my day and how do I want to end my day? And so I have been testing this method for the last three days. And I have just found knowing what my first moment is going to be and knowing that it's going to be a great moment and knowing what my last moment is going to be. And also knowing that it's going to be a last moment just puts a big smile on my face and just gets me excited for the day. And then also just puts me in a really good state of mind when I'm going to bed. And I did want to say that even though um, Alex recommends typing a, a checklist on a blank document, or she also has some templates, if you buy the book, there's a link to getting her templates. One of the things that I went ahead and did was I used my favorite app, which is Asana, to kind of create a template for myself for this daily checklist. And then I just print that out and put that on a clipboard like she suggested. So I love that her checklist method isn't just a traditional checklist method. It actually does have some unexpected aspects to it. And so I don't want to give it away in this video and, and talk through each of the items. Um, if you did attend one of her classes or you're attending or you're reading her blog, you might actually get her checklist method in there. But I did want to leave it to her to kind of teach you the whole thing and encourage you to get the book if you want to learn more about it. But I do love the fact that in her method of creating a checklist, there is definitely space not just for tasks, but also space for you to experience all of the things that happen in a day and all of the things that really are important to you. So I love that. Um, and I also love the fact that the more you reward your brain, the more you're likely to get done, which is why our brain loves checklists because the more you make these little easy little check marks, the more you're likely to keep going. It's kind of like that um, motivation snowball that kind of gets us through those days. And I have to say that ever since I've started using a checklist, I've definitely been able to get a lot more done, not just professionally, but also personally, and just felt so much better about all the things that I'm committing to each day as well. Some of the other checklists that Alex talks about in her book, I'm not going to kind of 
dive into them in this review, but I do want to talk about the fact that she talks about so many different checklists, and I love that, is the loose end checklist. I thought this would be such a perfect checklist to kind of do when you're doing a life or a business admin day, just to kind of tie up all the loose ends in one of these two areas. A seasonal checklist, a survival checklist, a marketing checklist, a workout checklist. I kind of liked reading, and I was very much in awe of her workout a birthday checklist. Now this one, I have to say, is my favorite because I am someone who's over the top excited about their birthday and I get really offended when other people are not over the top excited about my birthday. And my birthday is next week and my poor husband has got so much pressure on him to create this perfect, amazing birthday every year. And so what I did this year was I actually wrote down a checklist of food I want to eat, drinks I want to have, experiences I want to do with him, stuff I want to do alone, and then the gifts that I want. And I printed that out, I put it on a clipboard, and I put it on his pillow. And so now he knows that this is what I want to do. And there is no confusion. There's no expectation from my side that he feels like, oh, he's obliged to do. And if he falls short, I'm going to get resentful. And so that kind of anxiety is taken out of the picture. And we're just going to focus on having a really fun birthday. And maybe not everything on my checklist is going to get done. But at the end of the day, it is the way that I want my birthday to go. And so this is the checklist that I think is a game changer for me personally, game changer for my relationship, and is one that I was so excited to create. It was the first one that I created after reading this book um, and is the one that I'm most excited to implement next week. So I love that. Um, Some of the other checklists that Alex talks about are the vacation checklist, the staycation checklist, a self-esteem checklist, and then honestly, a checklist on any topic that you can think of. And that kind of inspired me to come up with a hundred plus checklist ideas. And I'm going to tell you how to get the the free download to that as well underneath this video. And it's really easy, but it was just a brainstorm of all of the different checklists that you can create. So checklists, as Adel Gawande says, are absurdly simple, but they work. And so who am I to argue? argue with something that is absurdly simple. I think that if they work, you should just do them. You don't need to have something super complicated in order to make it work. Um, The fourth kind of takeaway that I took from this book was not exactly a takeaway. It wasn't something, again, it wasn't something that Alex said. It was just me taking the book and then applying it to my unique situation. And she talked about how NASA, when they had the moon launch, they had a checklist and it was over a hundred pages long. They referred to it as the fourth crew member. And it was, it detailed every single thing they had to do from the time that they got into the rocket ship till the time it came back down. And in my business where we have launches, we have courses that are going out there. We have client deliverables, I think it would be so useful for me to create a fourth crew member, which is a detailed checklist of every single thing we need to do in order to get a product out into the world. And so this is something that I'm committing to do in February, which is actually sitting down and creating the fourth crew member for my business. So I really loved this story and I'm taking it and applying it to my business in this very unique way. A couple of other things that she talked about, and again, this was not something that she talked about from the perspective of really having you take this away from the book. She talked about how she taught um, the checklist in her Get It Done workshops, which is you come in with a project and you have 72 hours to get it done. And so again, this was not something that she talked about. She didn't talk about what those 72 hours make up um, or any of that stuff. But I just loved that idea of setting a timeline and having a checklist hand in hand. And it just inspired me to think about some of the projects that I had to get done in my business, especially, um, and I've actually not thought about it personally, but as I'm talking, I'm realizing you could also do this with personal projects, but there's so many little projects in my business that could easily get done in a 72 hour period and creating a checklist for what needs to be done during those 72 hours and just doing that would just actually get them smashed out. And so one of the things I'm going to try from tomorrow actually is doing a project, which is a 72 hour project. I do have a checklist prepped for it and I'm going to go in there. I'm going to smash it. I'm really excited about it. So I thought this was such a game changing idea, which is to pick up projects in these 72 hour periods and then club it with the power of a checklist and then just get it done. And you could do this for personal projects. You could do it for professional projects. Um, I think there's so much that you could do in 72 hours that it's amazing. It's such a great idea, Alex. Thank you so much. Um, the last two ideas, again, this one 
especially number six, is definitely not something that came from the book. It actually came from her resources section where she was talking about her the apps that she listens to when she's writing and how she had this Spotify playlist that she listened to when she was writing this book. And it kind of got me thinking that every time I pick a playlist and it kind of becomes habit for me, it just puts me into the zone quicker for a project. And so my kind of takeaway from this was that Whenever you're working on a longer project and you want to get yourself into the zone really quickly, um, it's always a great idea to create a playlist for yourself for every new project, especially the extended ones that you're working on, especially if you like to work to music. I personally like to work to um, instrumental music, and so I found it useful to have a selection of two to three playlists. Depending on what I'm doing, I'll play a particular playlist, and it really gets me into the zone faster. Now I'm a trainer. I know that music and learning go hand in hand. I just never thought about it from that perspective of putting music and productivity together to get stuff done. So that's what I'm saying, which is sometimes you could come at a book from a completely different angle and take it away into your life and business, and it just changes the way that you look at something. So I really love that idea. And so number seven, and this is really linked to that freebie that I made, which is that checklists can work for any life area. So whereas Alex talked about the daily checklist and then she shared a couple of other checklist ideas, I always like to think of life kind of in these nine life areas of, um, I, I like to think of it from that perspective of health and wellness, home and organization, work and finance, personal relationships, fun, family, friends, love. And then also things that you want to do for yourself and your spirituality, um, and then also your learning and personal development. And so uh, when I started thinking about that and I started kind of brainstorming checklists, I came up with over 100 ideas for checklists that you can create across all of these um, life areas. And you could do checklists for the past, the present, or the future, which is amazing. And so I wanted to kind of share this list with you guys. And so there's a download below this video, which you can grab. It's completely free. And it's got over 100 ideas for checklists across nine life areas, nine or 10 life areas that you can create. And there's also some blank space for you to write down any checklist ideas that you come up with, because I would absolutely love to know what those are. And I love to add them to my checklist. So if you're interested in that, be sure to get that freebie underneath the video. And so now I want to really talk about how I'm using the book because I'm all about really sharing with you guys, not just my thoughts on the book and what I took away from the book, but then also how I'm applying the book to my life and my business. So I kind of already share with you that my birthday is on January 28th. I'm really excited about it. And so I kind of have this whole week planned of things that I want to do and I've printed it out, given it to my cutie and we're going to make it happen together. So I'm really excited about that. And so that was the first kind of application for me for this book. I'm also testing and having good success with the daily checklist. I'm really enjoying this. Um, I do think that probably right now the only um thing that keeps me back from using it consistently as of now, and I have to fix that, is the fact that I'm not able to get the Wi-Fi on my printer to work. And so I have to take my laptop to the printer every time to actually print out my checklist. That's the only thing I can envision getting in my way um, in terms of actually implementing the daily checklist every single day. Because it's just that, like, that little tiny barrier to getting something done that I have to sort out. But the minute I kind of figured how to sync it all up again, just because I've moved house and I'm not sure how to get this on the new Wi-Fi. But once I kind of get that done, I think that the daily checklist is going to have a firm place in my daily routine. And I really, really enjoy that. Again, it's all about creating these rituals and routines for yourself. And so I really enjoy that 10 minutes in the evening before going to bed, before snuggling with my husband, just sitting down and thinking about how I want the next day to go. And so I love having that time to really think about tomorrow today. So other checklists that I'm making, I'm sharing with you guys. Again, please get the freebie. It's 100 plus checklist ideas to motivate and inspire you. Grab the big list of checklists before the, below this video. Um, Another way that I've always used checklists, and this was actually not a new idea to me, but it did drive home the reasons why I'm so passionate about checklists when it comes to course creation. I always insist on my clients creating a course map, which is a checklist of everything that's included in their program. And I always tell them, print it out and give it to your students or get them to print it out so that they know 
every single video module download that they have to go through before they can complete your program because it just encourages course completion. Um, I've always also encouraged people to have mini checklists. So one is that overall big course checklist, but then I've always encouraged them to have like a module checklist and a lesson checklist. And one of the ones that I've thought about adding after reading this book is an action checklist. So I've always had kind of the checklist to get them through the program, but I think one of the ones I'm going to be a little more firm about insisting that my clients implement is an action checklist, which is a list of things that they want people to do after they've watched the course and after they've gone through the training materials. Um, interestingly, even before I read this book, I had decided my newsletter format for 2020 would be a checklist. And so every single week, the format that I've picked is kind of 10 ways to X or 10 things to X. And so, for example, this week, it's 10 ways to increase your productivity as a course creator. Um, the week before last, it was 10 ways to promote your course in 2020, most of which are free. And so I've already started using checklists without realizing that I was this was kind of meant to be. Alex's book and I were kind of meant to be this year. Um, and then lastly, there is a product that I've kind of been secretly working on, which is the fourth crew member for anybody who wants to launch a course, which is the course creation checklist. And so that's something that I'm committing to getting out in 2020 as well. So not only did I get a book review out as a result of reading Alex's book and just get some great stuff for my own life, but I also got a great product idea as well. So because of that, I would have to say that I've definitely given this book five on five. It's an easy read. I went through it in half a day, um, even with taking notes and marking it up and writing down the quotes and all of that stuff so I could share it with you guys. And so I strongly recommend clicking the link below this video and purchasing your own copy of Alex's book. Or if you don't want to purchase a copy, you can ask your library to get a copy of that and you can check it out from there. But if you did like this book and you're looking for another book to inspire you around checklists and you haven't read The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande, that's another book that I would strongly recommend that kind of goes hand in hand with this book. It's almost like getting the yin and yang perspective, the feminine and masculine perspectives of a checklist from these two authors. So it's really great to kind of read these two books back to back. Um, and lastly, I think this is the quote that resonated the most with me in this entire book, which was that you don't find your purpose, you choose it. Because I think in the online space, and then also if you're a self-development, personal development junkie, there's people who are always telling you, you got to find your purpose, you have to find it. And you kind of feel like this navigator digging, explorer digging, and then you get frustrated because you kind of feel like you're digging in all the wrong places for your purchase for your purpose sometimes. And so I love that Alex kind of rephrases this and says that it's not about finding it. It really is about committing and choosing your purpose because I'm one of those people that I feel is very multi-passionate and honestly, my purpose could be so many things. And so I really felt that this was a quote I have to write out and stick on my desk because it's just that reminder to really be intentional and to know that whatever you decide for yourself is right. And that's all that matters. It's not really about discovering and going on some kind of purpose quest. It's really about sitting with yourself and making that decision as to this, yes, this is what I feel is what I want to do. And this is how I want to approach life. So thank you so much um, for going through this book review with me. I really enjoyed introducing you guys to the checklist book by Alexander Franzen. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of book review, and I would love to do so many more of these this year. So let me know what you think, and I will see you next time. Once again, this is Seema Parwani from contentbyseema.com, and go ahead and get that freebie below the video, and also get your hands on Alex's new book, The Checklist Book. See you next time. Bye.